Hey, everybody. So, I've got another treat for you. This is my mom, who you've met before. Um, and a big part of this class is about wild edibles. And um, my mom has been my chief inspiration and largely uh, my chief instructor on wild edibles today. Um, I like to say that I live by the seasons, and I do. Um, I look forward to the next phase of the forest transformation from one season to the other, and I measure, there's a metric that I use that allows me to kind of keep order of what my duties are as a person, um, as a father, as a homesteader, as a, uh, sorry about that. Um, and it's a way in which I can ensure that, um, uh, my own mental health is, um, where it should be. I get a lot of joy out of consumptive activities in the forest. And I think that in turn, that allows for me to have a deeper connection than a lot of my peers to the natural world and thus... The hope is that as I walk through my life, I am sentient in a way that allows me to make day-to-day -day decisions that would um, increase the sustainability of the natural world. As somebody that, as something that does consume, my recognition of, of what the forest offers me gives me a clear idea of what I offer it. Mm -hmm. Can you relate to that? Mm -hmm. That just kind of reminds me of Newell Gibbons' quote about, I mean, it's not totally the same, but the, the threat to the wild places isn't the people that harvest. And I, I kind of am going off track. No, no, I, no, I think that's really no, true. It's not, <laughs> it's not the th threat isn't the people that harvest an occasional. He was talking about the jack in the pulpit corn, which actually has to be process to it before you use it, but it's it's the major developers, the people that are just aren't connected at all. You know, it's just um, when you when you have the connection and you interact with the natural world and with plants and with you use them, you just so it kind of goes back to that immersive experience, um, which offers a lot more than just fodder for a dinner party conversation, but rather it's something that you hold uh, really deep inside you mm -hmm. and you want to share with people that you love mm -hmm. and can't really think of anything that's almost that powerful. Like it's, it's really, it's the, the ability to utilize, right? So you have the ability to potentially go in the forest and eat off the land in a survival situation. That's great, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and that's kind of a, almost like a macho or like an mm -hmm. ego thing. But what's even greater is the ability to incorporate that into like everyday life. Mm -hmm. And be able to put food on the table um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. That That is... Um, that, that just allows, I think, for a higher level of consciousness. I really do. I, um, you know, I tell people like that the trees talk to me. I'm, I'm really not. I'm not like some kind of guru, which sounds totally doofus. Like, because that is, it's totally ridiculous. The trees don't talk to me. Yeah. At all. But when you really put emphasis on immersion and then humbling yourself. To the lessons of the forest. And that's what it's about. It's about humbling. It really is. I know it is. Which kind of sounds antithetical to that idea of consumption. But when you're able to do that, um, I mean, it's great for my ego. I'll go in the, in the, in the woods with people and they're like, how did you know that was going to be there? Mm -hmm. Or how did you know that was going to happen? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I just did. Because I'm yeah. gathering the signs as I'm moving across. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, it doesn't feel like it's magic. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just, this is where I live, and I'm gathering these signs at different times of the year and relating to that, re relating to that, what I might need at that mm -hmm. given moment. 
whether I'm hunting mushrooms or elderberries. Well, I mean, you mentioned something about your mental health. I just think it's so wonderful and such a, um, it is part of being a well person to go out and pick mushrooms, go for the search. Yep. And I remember, I just have to say this, this, this couple of memories come to mind when someone came to visit us when you were very little. And you were talking about the plants in the woods, your friends, your friends. And then one of you, when you were little, you know, grab my, your chubby little hand, grab my, come on, mom, let's see what's happening. Let's go out in the woods today and see what's happening. Because it changes. It changes on a daily basis. So quickly. So quickly. And it's just, I don't know. I can honestly can imagine having, not having it a part of my life. I, I, I cannot. And there's many mysteries to learn about, um, discover, yeah. and embrace. And, uh, you know, you really can't just learn it by reading someone else's. You, know, you have to have a certain knowing, I guess, and, uh, and an intellectual knowing, but there's a knowing that is that's deeper than that when you interact and you use things and you know where to go and you know, you know, this fall, I don't know when I called you and I told you from uh, those uh, Boletus edulis, mm. uh, it's porcini, it's one of a great mushroom. Um, it, it, you just, the things were just right. It had, it had just rained after it um, hadn't rained for a while. Uh, the temperature was right and I went out and they were just that's kind of a knowing kind of thing that you learn, and you you can't you can't even like write down the exact science of it. It's a it's I've struggled with that for a long time in an academic setting. Like, how do you put to paper what you know? And um, although I, I I I truly don't believe it's like just this like mystic thing, but I really believe it's based on based upon immersion. And, and utilizing um, what the bounty that the natural world offers on a day-to-day -day basis and ensuring that you're living your life in a way that you are giving back to the same landscapes that, uh, that you're taking from. And that, that just, that, that just you, get, you get a gift. You, you are gifted something, and you can't read it in a book. Um, and it's really hard to, to kind of put it into, into edu speak. I was once told this is like, they call it like, like um, anthropologic knowledge or whatever, like, which is a type of intellectual knowledge that's much harder to quantify. Like, you can't put it into uh, a formatted test to be able to measure someone's ability within it because it's, it's almost innate. And so where does that come from? It probably comes from multiple multi-generations mm -hmm. and the again utilizing uh, this stuff time and time again but I've also found in my life like if I'm in a, in a really stressful time in my life um, or I put you know it's, it's it, at times hard because my career is based on this or there's too much pressure on finding a certain plant or mm -hmm. um, forcing the woods to perform for you that I just fail I also, you know, I find suddenly I feel uncomfortable in this space that I'm so comfortable in. Mm. And it's so weird. Like, it's it's definitely a dimension that I don't think we've figured out as humans yet. Mm. And and I'm not at peace. You know, for a while I was, uh, well, you know, but for a brief while I was actually doing, I was selling some wild edibles and had some contracts. I never made a lot of money. It never happened. Um, but then it was like this pressure was on you to find this right. stuff. And it didn't work. It right. just wasn't working. And it also probably took away a little bit of the um, special, the, the, the uniqueness, the, the personal aspects mm -hmm. of going out um, with just me and my family. Um, so, you know, I don't know, things that stick out for me, certainly mushrooms are a great timeline, but it's not just mushrooms. I mean, um, every season has something to focus on. And I kind of have my staples but then I always try to add something in a little different. Well, and then sometimes the forest, it doesn't produce the same amount every year. You know, some mm -hmm. years there's no other race. It's just, they're just gone. The birds have eaten them. Right. 
uh, the blossoms, you know, never uh, fertilize. Um, sometimes there's, there's not a lot of mushrooms or, um, you know, there is always a lot of, of, of some plants like leeks and things like that. But, um, I don't know. What advice would you give someone that was just getting into this? It's become really popular. I know. Well, I, I think, um, though it's not always easy to find, uh, hanging out with someone that does this you know it's a part of their life so mentorship yep. yes yes and then i mean there are some there are some good field guides i mean um i do like the peterson guide although that, that's you know it's i'm I'm, I'm honestly not that up on the, the latest stuff that's out there and i think there is a lot but um it just seems like uh being with someone that is comfortable and really knows their stuff, and um, but that you know that's not always easy for people to find someone like that. Accessibility. No, I think you're right because I think for me, my advice would be take baby steps. Yes. Oh, definitely. Um, incorporate the wild foods into everyday meals. Yeah. Um, try to cook fancy with it. I, th I think I think mm -hmm. that. There's just something to that. Like, it's no longer about just a, a you know a neat piece of survival knowledge you have, but rather it's like this is living. Like, I'm gonna make right. a really nice meal out of right. this. Go and go with just maybe five plants to start that are common that you find them. You know, all over, like the cattail. That's perfect. That's pretty common, and it's very safe. Very safe. You're not gonna make. The only problem you could ever have is if you got the cocktail from a contaminated water source. Right, right. Which, in Vermont, you kind of have to work at right. finding something that's that poison. And also, I mean, don't just limit yourself to food. Um, cattail, it's got the leaves you can, you can weave. It's got the down you can use for stuffing, stuffing things. I mean, stuffing things like stuff. I still am hoping to do. Yeah. Um, nettle is another wonderful plant, and nettle Sting makes a nettle. great a great cordage. It's extremely nutritious, makes medicine, a very tasty green. Um, so I I go slow, like you said, just focus on a few plants. Um, plantain is another one that's just everywhere. Common plantain, yeah, yeah, and that's a medicine as well as a, you know, a, um, medicine for external as well as internal, and it's a plant that you can eat. I mean, seeds are really good ways to. Um, and then there's, I mean, I could go on about all the, all the things there are. Yeah, it's it's. To, well, I think I think it's valuable coming from you. It's also, you know, somewhat frustrating. This is special what they're getting now, but. It, you know, I'm usually able to bring people just on an impromptu walk. Yeah. And that's kind of um, almost impossible to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, but this is this this is also valuable. There is, I mean, there's there's so much out there. I'm trying to, you know, we're kind of coming to the end of it. Um, yeah, well, we're coming into the not time. season. And it's root season. Root season. You might need to dig your roots. Um, um, so what roots would you be well, digging? Well, dandelion. I have a batch. I have an area where I'm going to be digging some dandelion. I'm going to coffee substitute or, or like a tea. Yep. Um, burdock. Yeah, I have done burdock. Burdock root is very good. It's not yeah. bad tasting. I no, mean, it's, no, it's good. If it's, it's young. It's going to be the first year. You can't get the burdock with the burrs on it. No, you got to get, it, bur burdock has two life stages. So you get that early right life stage, mm -hmm. more or less before it even flowers. It's just the leaves, those mm -hmm. big leaves. And then, and then the, and burdock, you know, burdock's so interesting because it's a pioneer species, meaning it grows in disturbed sites, oh, yes. okay. but it heals the land oh, okay. because not only does it till the land because it's such a disruptive large mm -hmm. plant, so it actually tills the soil, but then it's got those huge leaves that decompose so readily, oh, thus right. adding nutrients right. to the soil. Um, right. Kind of a interesting sub piece, and, and, and I know it like. I have a chip on my shoulder about this. I do. I, I, I because it's becoming so popular and the cool. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And and I shouldn't. And I, I again, that's. I, I should probably humble myself to that. But it's been a part of our lives for so long. 
it's kind of become something that's sacred for me. It's not just I'm a long hauler. It's not a it's not just a trend. And it's probably good that more people are, are doing it, you know, and, and remembering that that is the case. But I guess the, the one thing I'd say is that, like so much of today's world, um, we're motivated by uh, personal glory. Oh. And getting that glamour shot that then we can put on the computer for everybody to see because oh, okay. we're so great. And just, I think we're all susceptible to that. Everybody is. I mean, it preys on human nature. But somehow finding... And ensuring that you're balanced within that, in that, mm -hmm. you know, you are giving back, that you're being, I mean, I, I'm guilty of this, that you're being honest about what you know and don't know. Oh, okay. And that you continue to be a student. Because um, I think there's always more to learn. Mm -hmm. And as you as you alluded to, you know, you've been doing this for, for 50 years. <laughs> and there is still more to learn. Yeah, there is. Plants are so wonderful because they don't run away from you. <laughs> right. You know, like, you know, like they're, and they're, and there are similarities in them to families. As you get to know the families, you, you, you can look at a plant. And you might not know exactly what it is, but you know the family, like the mint family. You know, yeah. The family has got this heavy top and that, but it's got the mint family, it's got the square stem. It might have an aromatic smell, it might not. It also has got the opposite leaves leaves that are right across from each other, very orderly looking plant, and so the mint family is huge, but that's an area where you could start, you could think, oh, it's one, one family, yeah, like, oh, I think that might be mint, and then feel it, is it a square stem, and look at it, does it have the opposite leaf formation, and does it, does it have a smell, um, there's other, other families, the rubus family, that's, with all the berries that are like the raspberry and the blackberry that are made up of seeds that have the fleshy mm -hmm. um, juice around them. And there's a lot of those in that family. Um, so yeah. we, I mean, we can go through that, like, you know, my, my early, so the early spring plants, the ephemerals, always very exciting. Mm -hmm. There's some great edibles, although not many that I think you get a lot of substance from. Um, well, most greens, you don't get a lot. You don't get a lot anyway, yeah. but, you know, we're, we're running into, you know, at that point we have your wild leeks, which you can gather right into December, as you know, most people don't know that, but they're even better. Mm -hmm. Although, potentially, I haven't seen it so much where I go, but I've heard that leeks have become such a hot commodity that there are places where they're really being taken. So, if you're taking the bull, you just kill that plant, yeah, right? So, if you take a leaf, that's, that's going to flower again, but... Um, so you've got your ephemerals, your dog tooth violet, your leeks, your gingers. You mentioned Jack and Popo, although you talked about the corn, which comes later. Yeah, I don't play with the corn. Oh, yeah, we got to stay away from those. And yeah, people do get sick. And, this there, is... and there's not many of them, really. And it's yeah. like, well, the big thing that I read about that was that um, the bulb, it's a round, it's a, called a corn. It's a, one of the root formations, a corn. It's a round, and you slice it. If you slice it through, it's solid. I don't know what else is a corn. What other plant has a corn? But anyway, supposedly when you slice it up and you dry it and then you grind it, it's a substitute for chocolate. <laughs> and then you. I've heard it. that. I've never and we died. did it, and we. Yeah. I mean, this was. I'm actually kind of ashamed we 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 sacrificed a little back of the bowl, but but um, we actually when I was a young girl. When my mom, we used to, we did um, some farmers markets, and we were selling those Jack cookies made cookies. of the jack of the bulbet, and people started coming back complaining of a little burning in their. Throat. Oh boy, what so a nightmare! We, we so good, quickly good, pull, pulled the jack of the pulpit off. Good, I, the good, good um, advice to just leave yeah. the jack of the pulpit yeah. alone. But so you got your spring ephemerals, and then you get into some more substantial things as in early summer. Like yeah, more what? like fruit. More like summer is more fruiting time. Yeah. And then fall is the roots and the nuts. Yeah. I mean, that's the general, not that those don't overlap. You they know, certainly you do. You can get greens now. Oh, yeah. You can get um, some of the fruit is very early. Um, nuts are not something that you're going to get in the spring. Although hazelnuts are very early nuts. They're more summer. Yeah, well, that's because hazel blossoms uh, flowers in the fall. Okay. And the 
which is a lot of people don't know, they're flowering now. They like mm-hmm. wait for the first frost and they mm-hmm. flower. It's cool. I really love hazel. Be, be t- um, well, I was so excited because this Which is a, okay. This is just something that I have found last was it last year was my first finding of this. It it was the um, the American hazelnut. Mm. It's not the beaked hazelnut that has the prickly. Yep. Sorry, it's the um, it's got kind of a feathery, leafy case around the nut. And I was so excited to find those. Um, actually, in Middlebury. And in very public places, and and then on the trail around Middlebury, and, and so I, were these were these domestic they, at one time? No, they were not. They're these all are wild. wild. Yeah. Yes, and I was happy about that and excited, and then I waited this this year for when I thought they'd be ready, and I went and there wasn't a one. Mm, just and because of just the squirrel? No, I think the squirrels. Oh, squirrels! Because there's so many rodents. Yeah, the squirrels get them right when they're ready, and then the big hazelnuts, <laughs> a similar thing, but they're. They're a fun little nut. Well, and it, but that again, like you go out and try to find something. Sometimes you're not going to be able to find it. Uh, basswood blossoms. When the mm. basswood when the basswood blossom, it's just such a great. Tea. It's oh. really such a wonderful tea. Oh, it's yeah, it's good. To easy eat. to make. You can, you can eat, eat them, right? Sweet. You can actually they're just eat them. Buttery and sweet and nice. But they're not always there. Right. You go. You'll go a couple of years without seeing mm-hmm. any. Um, it was pretty exciting when they do show up. Winter is extremely tough, let's be honest. There's, there's, you know, your meat, you're eating meat. Um, well, inner bark. Inner bark, which is... Uh, Adirondack means bark eater, right? R- right. Um, but it's not good. No. Because I've done it. And yeah. it's not something to write home about. No, I mean, roots, if you can... The if ground, you the ground's get frozen, in, in and at them. But um, perhaps some aquatic species. Maybe. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't really do much foraging in the winter. No, I, no. I don't think anybody really ever did. No, um, you but have to I think mean, that that's when you have preserved things and you're dry, you know. So, which is the next level to this? I didn't even think we'd go here, but you know, I was talking about this just today in school. We're we're like the way in which our relation, the relationship we have with food today in the Western world, that's a very new phenomenon. Most of us can't fathom a time. That came before this, but we have to recognize that we didn't have the the preservatives that we use now mm-hmm. that long ago. They they just didn't exist. Therefore, our food had to be fresher and more local. Mm-hmm. From there, we didn't have the mass transit that we have, where we can bring foods from all right. over. That didn't right. exist either. Right. So we had such a closer relationship um, with our food, and therefore, we also could you know you, you couldn't go. Um, Buy an apple in May. Right. This is not going to, there was no way to do that. And now we don't think twice. We'll get an avocado any time of the year. Right. Um, So what is my point? There's also that relationship with taking this all to the next level of preservation, Mm -hmm. um, which is really quite exciting and fun and tasty. It is. Whether that's drying, lack of fermentation, something that I'm into, I guess, at this point. Fine. what else do we have? Well, we have canning and freezing. We have canning and freezing. Um, fermentation, drying. That's it. I mean, root celery, which mm-hmm. sounds so easy and it's not. Oh, <laughs> I mean, in, in, the, in the canning piece, you can make mixtures of things. You know, you can, you know, make a stew and you can can that. You can... I've done a lot of that sort of thing in my life. It's not the most nutritious way to go, but if you're living without power, it is it is wonderful. Right. To have food like that and that you know where it came from. I'm very much I was I, I don't well, not totally of course, but you know, I have a simple diet. Um, and I use it I use a lot of wild well, we know, I mean, a simple diet isn't that fun. I haven't always had a simple diet, I'm not going to lie. But we know it's healthy. Yeah. Although, and I don't want to make too much of it, I, I think there's a time, perhaps in my youth, when we didn't eat very well oh, at no. all. Oh, no, I mean, no. We are just so close to the bone, it wasn't healthy. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of go too far. Yes, you can. 
Oh, you can me- remember that lady at the survival school that said she was going to come up with a daughter in grass and live in the TV? Do you remember that? I just thought of that the other day. I think I do. <laughs> I'm sure she didn't. No. You, you can't just uh, eat grass. Well, on, a, on, a, on a, another day, I hope we can do something about medicinals, um, which is a, a whole other realm of plants that you have expertise in. Um, I guess I would leave it with, uh, I am, I'm just thrilled to offer this. Honestly, I am to the, mm-hmm. to the students, our conversation. I think that's pretty special. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the, it, 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 an emphasis or a focus or an investment in wild edibles and then incorporating them into my everyday life. I just can't imagine a life without that. I can't, you know, imagine go, walking into a forest and not having the forest seen to me all this stuff I have because oh, of, because yeah. because of humility because of generational knowledge that I that I was given um, and because somewhere along the line I decided I decided to listen and um, so I, I guess just quality of life I think there's probably a lot of folks that are missing out mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a, it's always been a part of our life, and a part of yours, and a part of Luke's, a part of the girls. Um, and just so many reasons. Yeah, you know, I guess I, I think um, we have these. Uh, we better end it at this, but feel free to respond. So, okay. but we have uh, the societal idea of what makes us intelligent mm. what we're supposed to learn subject matter mm. what we're supposed to learn and yet it just seems that as i grow i recognize that um math english science social studies they're all very important mm-hmm. and i'm not i'm not demeaning them but there's so much more and giving it's so interesting that you mentioned this because I just came from and I, I'm not espousing, you know, the Amish or anything. And yeah. I haven't really been around them much, but I was just down in that area and our daughter um, stopped and bought a rabbit from this, this Amish farm and out comes this young young I mean maybe late stage, maybe yeah. maybe ten, yeah. twelve. Uh, um, and he was just coming out and obviously it was his rabbit he was selling and he took them into the barn where there were just tons of rabbits and it was his thing and he was showing and how knowledgeable knowledgeable he was and Heather Rose made the comment that the the exact same thing as what you're saying Mm. that some people you know that sometimes there's this attitude of educated or whatever but the knowledge and the confidence and the proficiency of that young man with what he was doing And it, it was just a really delightful thing. Yeah, and so this, this stuff can be, I think, just as valuable as, as traditional forms of education. And um, it's, not, it's not just the spice of life. It's not just a cool hobby. It's, it is life. Mm-hmm. And maybe if we look at sustainability and we look at, you know, the fact. Here's a fact for you. 600 acres of forested land is being lost in New England daily. That's really? daily. Really? Daily. That's awful. It's awful. Wow. Where does that where's that fact from? Uh, I, I I just did with BHA where we're looking at conservation. Okay. It is cited. I could give you the journal. I don't have it off the tip of okay. my tongue, but I'm not making that up. It's a massive number. Now, obviously Vermont's a little bit insular from that. However, Three years ago is the first year that we began losing forest land as opposed to gaining forest land in over 150 years. So the point I'm making is that it seems to me that the more immersive we are, the more we understand the natural world and become a part of it, not dominating it, yes. but become a part of that place, we're going to be able to hopefully, the optimist says, move forward in a way where we do better than our ancestors and we ensure that the sustainability, the survivability of our species, because this is not a this is not a sustainable track. And that's going to come from actual hands-on work with the natural place as opposed to just kind of compartmentalizing it and putting it in a bubble. Right. Can't touch it, it's under glass. No, I understand. It's in yes. a bubble. That no, 
it's, it's great. It's great. I, I get what's going on, but I mean, there's a place for that, I guess. Learning, but yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Mom. All right. Love you. Okay.